discussions and since these days i have been taking up all the antibiotics so uh, moving on to the another classes of antibiotics that is the amino glycosides so students these amino glycosides they have got their names by we can uh, get to know as to where how the name amino glycosides have been given to them so glycose means a sugar and amino means a sugar is going to have an attached amino group so these are bit particularly these are large organic compounds which are going to have attached amino sugars to them so such i mean these are the amino glycosides the, uh, hence they have got this name and now uh, they are broadly called as the narrow spectrum antibiotics so students these amino glycosides they find a wide variety of usage in the different types of bacterial uh, serious bacterial infections so um, uh, wherever whenever there is a kind of a very serious bacterial infections and that too becomes uh, if it is very uh, of it, it if it is going to have a very serious life threatening problem then these amino glycosides are the drug of choice because they are directly bactericidal in nature so students do remember that these amino glycosides they are bactericidal in nature and they are given in severe septicemia conditions where the bacterial infections are very severe and if such bacterial infections are very difficult and can lead to very serious complications so in that conditions the amino glycosides they are the drug of choice so they directly kill the bacteria and hence they are bactericidal so when talking of the mechanism of action of these amino glycosides so these amino glycosides they act by inhibiting the bacterial protein synthesis so the bacterial protein synthesis is ultimately inhibited by these amino glycosides and uh, since we all know that these amino glycosides the protein synthesis they are inhibiting so within a prokaryotic bacterial cell the there is a 70s type of a ribosome what is present which is going to have two subunits that is the 50s and the 30s so these amino glycosides they are uh, they bind to the 30s subunit of the ribosome and elicit their action so um, moving on the uh, bacteria where they are effective so students do remember these amino glycosides they are having only uh, efficacy for uh, treating aerobic aerobic gram negative infections so they are it they are the drug of choice to treat only the aerobic gram negative infect bacterial infections so students do remember the striking and the distinguishing feature of these amino glycosides is that they are effective against the gram negative bacteria and that to the aerobic gram negative bacteria do remember students they have no anaerobic actions they are not going to inhibit they have they have been uh, it is a very important fact that these amino glycosides they do not have any role in the killing of anaerobic organisms so moving on to the classification of these amino glycosides so these amino glycosides they can be broadly subdivided depending upon the usage the site where they are used so they can be broadly subdivided into the systemic amino glycosides and the topically used amino glycosides or the topical antibiotics so the systemic amino glycosides comprises of the drugs that is the streptomycin the gentamicin and the natalmycin whereas the topically used antibiotics comprises of the neomycin and the kanamycin another classification what has been um, given in some books so the another classification is basically they are uh, classified according to from where they are obtained from the soil or actinomycetes so the soil actino uh, they are uh, they are obtained from the soil actinomycetes uh, the genus is actinomycetes from where they are derived and they on that criteria they have been broadly subdivided into two categories that is the ones that are derived from the genus streptomyces and the other they from uh, and the other which are derived from the genus mini my micro monospora so students the ones what are derived from the genus and strepto streptomyces the important the drugs what are there it is the streptomycin the tobramycin the kanamycin and the neomycin and the ones what are derived from the genus micromonospora they are basically the gentamicin and the natalmycin moving on so students um, uh, moving on to the uses so students uh, before moving on to the uses i would like to emphasize about the 
pharmacokinetics of these drugs so students do remember these uh, amino glycosides they are having neither oral absorption neither they are absorbed uh, orally or they are not destroyed in the GIT so students do remember when talking of the pharmacokinetics these amino glycosides they are neither absorbed orally and nor they are destroyed in the GIT except in uh, conditions where there is certain kinds of ulcerations if it is an ulcerated condition in the uh, GIT then only these uh, amino glycosides can be absorbed on a normal basis on a, a regular trend there is as such no oral absorption and the, they are neither destroyed in the GIT. Moving on to the next, when we will be talking of the parenteral uh, administration. So whenever these amino glycosides, they are being uh, administered by the parenteral route. So in the parenteral administration, they are very well absorbed by the parenteral uh, roots. That is both by intramuscular and the intravenous, uh, uh, intravenous forms. They are very well absorbed. And moving on to the distribution of these drugs. So students do remember, these amino glycosides, they are, they are uh, never, uh, they are going to cross the mm, cell membrane. They are, uh, they are always found extracellularly. That is, they are always found floating in the tissue fluid. Their concentration is mainly present in the extracellular fluid. That is, and that too, it is in the ionized form that they are found in the ECF. And moving on to the last. Uh, that is the plasma half-life. So when talking of the plasma half-life, these amino glycosides have a plasma half-life of 2 to 4 hours. When talking of the kidney excretion, so students do remember the, uh, the these amino glycosides, they are um, excreted from the kidney as it is by glomerular filtration and that too the, in the unchanged or the unionized uh, that too in the ionized form so students this was all about the excretion of the uh, of the um, pharmacokinetics of the amino glycosides and now we move on to the uses so the uses of the amino glycosides they can be um, as i've already told you they are useful only in the treatment of the aerobic gram negative infections they are never used in the treatment uh, in the uh, treatment for aerobic in, uh, anaerobic infections so in the anaerobic infections they are not the drug of choice they are only used for treating the aerobic gram negative organisms or the gram negative infections moving on to the next that is they are also helpful in the treatment of the upper and lower urinary tract infections Moving on to the third thing, third, uh, third usage is they, that this, these amino glycosides, particularly the streptomycin. So the streptomycin, these are the drug of choice. They, they form the second line of drug for the treatment of the uh, tuberculosis. In the treatment of tuberculosis, these amino glycosides find their uses. Moving on to the fourth, they are widely used in the treatment of various eye and ear infections so in the treatment of eye and ear infections of ear particularly the gentamicin and the canamycin that is the gentamicin and uh, the gentamicin and the canamycin they are used in the treatment of eye and ear infections moving on to the last uh, fifth that is the next that is in the treatment of hepatic coma and in the various kind of skin infections wherever there is any kind of a bacteremia or septicemia in the treatment of skin infections that is in hepatic coma and, and skin infections they are widely used moving on to the sixth use that is they are widely used in the treatment of the zoonotic infections so the zoonotic infections particularly comprises of the tularemia and the brucellosis and plague so the uh, the infections what are caused in where uh, the infections is going to spread by the contact with certain kind of animals or then by the contact of the secretions of the wild animals so in such infections what are caused by different types of animals and the contact through their secretions so to treat such infections these uh, amino glycosides find their uses and finally last but not the least they are widely used in the treatment of subacute bacterial endocarditis so students this was a short discussion about the uh, as to what are the amino glycosides and the uses of the amino glycosides so students in the next video i'll be talking of the mechanism of action of the amino glycosides and the adverse effects what is being elicited by them so students if uh, this was a short discussion about the amino glycosides students if you do like this video give it a thumbs up and stay connected for my upcoming videos 
do like and subscribe and share amongst your friends thank you students